Literacy Conversations. My name is Jamie Cramble. I am uh, Economic Development Officer with Wheatland County, a large near urban county, very closely uh, located to the east of Calgary. I'm joined here today by Brian Henderson, uh, Chief Administration Administrative Officer of Wheatland County. Uh, 2023 has been a, a year of significant change and development for our county, um, and so we'd like to uh, we'd like to welcome Brian and ask some questions about what he sees from 2023 and also what he sees coming up from 2024. So welcome, Brian. Good morning, Jamie. Thanks for having me on. Perfect. Thank you, Brian. I'll jump in with the first question. Uh, can you tell me some of the most significant uh, events or achievements from 2023? For sure. Um, so I'd say 2023 was a pretty exciting year for Wheatland County. So um, in 2023, Council approved a broadband project which will bring some of the fastest internet in Canada to our two major uh, industrial ASPs, so our Goldfinch ASP down near Carsland and our West Highway 1 ASP that uh, uh, kind of is just on the southern end of uh, the Highway 1. Um, so what that's going to do is bring uh, business caliber internet speed to those two broad or to, to those two ASPs. Um, on top of that, um, speaking of those two ASPs, um, there was two big land use approvals in those ASPs. So De Havilland had their uh, the land use approved in 2023 in the West Highway 1 Industrial Park. And CGC, the uh, sheetrock company, um, they had their uh, land use as well approved in 2023 as well. So those are the two major projects kind of going on in Wheatland in the near future. Um, also, in 2023 as well, in alignment with Council's strategic plan, Council approved the budget, which actually lowered our mill rates um, wow. from, from 2022. Yes, um, Council is really, um, uh, they're laser focused on trying to get those mill rates as low as possible. And right now we are probably one of the lower ones in Southern Alberta, which is great to attract business and kind of retain our businesses as well, as well as keep our service levels up. I just wanted and, to jump in there with, sorry, Brian. I, oh, no, no, please go ahead. <laughs> so I'll pause. Um, I just wanted to mention that on top of that, that uh, the low mill rate that Wheatland has, and we do have one of the lowest mill rates in the region, is that we uh, also offer a, uh, a non-residential uh, investor uh, tax credit for, for large investments that are uh, eligible in Wheatland County. And again, we're one of the only counties within the, uh, the region that have a, a tax incentive like that. Yeah, and, and it is very generous as well. So um, any developments that uh, have either improvements or new developments that have any any assessment with an uh, increase of over $10 million gets a 40% uh, tax, municipal tax reduction for three years. So it is a very lucrative um, tax incentive, which is really promotion, trying to promote development in Wheatland County. Sure, and, and I think w when you mentioned the, uh, the the two ASPs that we have, one being the West Highway One ASP, uh, sort of hits the Rocky View border and runs along Highway One to the town of Strathmore limits, and then the other being farther south, which is Goldfinch, and that is where our largest employer, Nutrient, is located. Both of those are located in very close proximity to the city of Calgary and and, and feature uh, very affordable land costs as well as access to that labor force within the city of Calgary, and I think that probably is a, a factor that has helped to attract both uh, de Havilland, which is a large uh, aerospace uh, company that manufactures aircraft for, for firefighting and other purposes, and CGC, which is a uh, drywall gyp, gyp rock manufacturer, um, which will both be, be coming into Wheatland County. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, sort of where those two developments are at? Yeah, for sure. So um, I'll start with CGC. So they're um, moving along quite well, actually. So they intend to have a brown gr uh, groundbreaking ceremony this spring, actually, in 2024. So that is um, to be coming in, I believe, May or uh, June, just depending on, you know, schedules and stuff like that. So they're also going to be having their permitting coming forward to the county very shortly, probably within February. So we're looking forward to, for that coming to, uh, forward for council for a decision as well. Um, as for De Havilland, I think that they, they're still working on their stuff as well. Um, I know that they have a lot of other layers of government, so they're working with the federal government as well, just because it is within Transport Canada. So I, I think they're um, they're progressing. It's just a little bit uh, more time consuming than um, CGC, who just works directly with our municipality and a little bit of provincial, but not too, too much. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, actually, an exciting project in 2023 is the county is still undertaking our studies for the West Side servicing. Mm -hmm. So that has progressed to a point where we are going to be providing the Goldfinch ASP 
with up to 1300 acre feet of raw water. And that's also uh, into that ASP, which will help service uh, CGC and their water supply demand. Um, one great thing about Wheatland County is that we do have a significant amount of water license, both through the Bow River Basin and through the WID, which we can both draw from. So that will not limit development in those two ASPs. Sure, I think those are important points that you touched on. Um, that, that Goldfinch ASP that we're referring to, which is uh, very close, it's off Highway 24 and 22X and very close proximity again to the city of Calgary. Um, it has a lot of very, very large companies there, such as Nutrien. There's Orica that uh, it's fertile, uh, uh, does um, anhydrous ammonia, I believe, not anhydrous ammonia, um, but it, it's, the, Nutrien does fertilizers, Orica does mining explosives, and there's a few other companies that are in that region that have very large footprints down there. And so there's room for more and we're very happy to talk with companies that are looking to locate a new facility because we definitely do have room for them and as you mentioned Brian there is that access to water southern Alberta can tend to be a very dry region but Wheatland is does have access to water uh, especially through that water line that you're referring to that was, uh, is going to service that region so I think that was a couple of good points that you touched on there um, other projects that you talked about uh, broadband for example which will also have an impact on that west side of the county um, can you tell us anything about the timeline for that when do you think that would be live or when will it be in in place so that one that one is still going forward um it should be live by the end of 2024 so that one is being constructed with uh shaw and rogers so they had that big merger so it uh it's great to work with a, such a large company but they'll have that most likely active um lit up and in the ground in 2024 for sure um one other thing i'd like to do is just give a plug to our <laughs> existing businesses as well both large and small so we have lots of great businesses within the county um so Stella Jones is a big one, uh, Nutrien, as you mentioned, um, Orica, and uh, Federated Co-op as well. They have a big gas plant yeah. down in um, in Carsland, down in Goldfinch. For sure. And yeah, we also have a few other um, agricultural companies down there as well, such as Cargill, Richardson, and, and so forth, and then in other parts of the county as well. So yeah, you're right. And, and, and Nutrien did an expansion recently as well as uh, some, the, some of the others are growing too, uh, and which is great. We'd love to see that. And, and there's also a lot of smaller businesses that have located in the county uh, and, and more to come, such as in Origin Business Park, which is on Highway 1. Uh, it's about uh, 12 minutes border to border from the city of Calgary. Uh, there's still lot of lots available in that area um, and, and many companies have, have have purchased recently and are in different stages of development there uh, so there's lots of opportunity within the county there's lots of places where you can locate um, as Brian mentioned there's the low tax rate the tax incentive uh, Wheatland is also a very flat organization very easy to work with uh, we love economic development for a couple of reasons we're looking for the job creation the tax revenue and we also want economic diversification so we welcome businesses to grow and to thrive in our county and we want to create that environment for them so thank you brian for that um as a couple of other things i'll mention from an economic development perspective being the economic development officer for wheeland county one is our phase two signage went in uh, so you will see as you drive through the county that we now have new welcome signs or gateway signage on glenmore trail Highway 24 and 901, and that's in addition to the existing signage that we put in in uh, 2022, and we are planning a further phase of that for 2024 as well. Uh, some of the other tools that we've developed, we have a brand new investment uh, focused website that has all the site selection and value proposition information for Wheatland County. So if you're interested in the county, you want to get a hold of us, all our information is there, as well as information to help you make that decision. So that is at investwc.ca. Um, and, and again, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Our contact information is on that website. A further tool that's that's going to be uh, a very important uh, tool in our arsenal coming up is the business directory. So we have an online business directory which is integrated into the investwc.ca website. And we encourage all Wheatland-based businesses located in Wheatland or have part of their operation in Wheatland to sign up on that website. And that website will provide uh, the public with information on your goods or services. 
And as we bring those mega projects in, as we bring those large developments in, they're going to need um, contractors. They're going to need potentially things fabricated. They're going to need services. And so please visit that website. And if you are a Wheatland business, please sign up on there. It's free. It's voluntary. And it, it's our basically only source of public information on Wheatland businesses. So it's a, a valuable tool there. Uh, another thing I'll mention is our business and community profile. So we have a brand new business and community profile. It's now on the investwc.ca website website as well as the municipal website and we've left hard copies with businesses and realtors there's other hard copies available there's some in the county lobby and that profiles our community our different hamlets our uh, and, and population centers as well as information on our services events and industries in there so feel free to come by the municipal office and pick up a copy or you can view it online uh, Brian, could you tell us a little bit about what might be ahead for 2024? Anything you'd like to highlight? Yeah, for sure. Um, so 2024, it will be a big year for capital projects within Wheatland County. So the one project I mentioned earlier was about um, creating a raw water raw water for the, our ASPs. So the one big project in 2024 is going to be the construction of a raw water line to service um, Goldfinch ASP. So that's going to provide a vast amount of water for that ASP. So water down there will not be a problem. Um, we're going to be continuing also working on our West Side servicing study. So just kind of putting the final um, dotting our T's and or dotting our I's and crossing our T's on getting the servicing into the West Highway One, um, which will see significant growth as well, um, just for servicing for water and wastewater, um, stormwater as well is also going to be factored into that as well. Um, and then on top of that, um, just finishing that broadband project is going to be a big one. And I think that would be about it. I know there's lots of other stuff and exciting stuff that are coming to Wheatland County. Um, our service levels, uh, we're, we're, we're maintaining those and most likely trying to increase those as well. Um, however, we are moving forward with council's mandate of keeping uh, the mail rates as low as possible. Yeah, I think that's an important factor that you mentioned. I know that with, with rising inflation and increasing costs and fuel costs and so forth, that Wheatland has made an effort in order to keep our, our non-residential tax rate at, at a fairly reasonable rate and, and not continually increase that tax rate as well. Um, any events that we should highlight for the public? I know there is an open house in Cheadle on February 6th with council. There's information on that on our website, uh, on the municipal website, as well as their social media channels. Uh, we are also doing a part of a regional workforce project with uh, the town of Strathmore, Neal County and Rocky View County, as well as our independent villages. There's information and a survey uh, that closes on February 9th. More information on that is on the municipal website, as well as their social media channels. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining joining us today. Remember to like and subscribe uh, and please check out our new website at investwc.ca as well as our social media channels. Thank you and uh, enjoy your day. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks for having me on.